Hey everybody, welcome back to Environment Together. Today, we're going to be talking about coral reefs and sunscreen. Coral are immobile animals. They secrete a hard limestone skeleton, which is what we recognize them by today. Each coral structure is actually made up of hundreds of thousands of tiny coral animals. Coral has a symbiotic relationship with algae, in most cases with zooxanthellae algae. The algae lives inside coral structure. It uses coral's waste to help with its photosynthesis. In turn, the algae produce oxygen, remove waste, and help the coral to grow and thrive. Because of this relationship, coral reefs produce oxygen for the surrounding environment and create the most biologically diverse environments in the world for fish and other creatures. Corals optimally live in clear waters of temperatures 73 to 84 degrees Fahrenheit. They require clear waters so that their zooxanthellae algae can photosynthesize. Sadly, there is a process known as coral bleaching that is destroying the coral reefs of our world. What is coral bleaching? When water is too hot or highly polluted, it leads to zooxanthellae algae leaving the coral. When this happens, coral loses its primary food source and becomes much more susceptible to disease. The coral turns stark white and dies. Coral bleaching can occur in waters with higher temperatures than 84 degrees Fahrenheit. One example of recent coral bleaching happened in Hawaii. From October 2014 through early 2015, there was a massive bleaching event across the Hawaiian Islands where water temperatures reached 86 degrees Fahrenheit. By 2017, 50% of the coral around the Hawaiian Islands was bleached. The Great Barrier Reef in Australia experienced a bleaching event of its own in 2016 and 2017. By the end of 2017, half of the coral in the Great Barrier Reef was bleached. Luckily for us, bleached coral can regain its life with cooler, cleaner waters. I recently shot footage of a coral reef and saw some coral in the beginning stages of bleaching. Most of it wasn't fully bleached yet and can recover with better conditions. So what can you do to help out our coral reefs? Sunscreen is one of the biggest pollutants for coral reefs in areas frequented by tourists. Some sunscreens are terrible for coral reefs, while others are fine. Sunscreens containing microbeads or nano zinc oxide or nano titanium dioxide can be eaten by baby corals or algae, causing coral to starve and die. Sunscreens containing oxybenzone, octinoxate, avobenzone, octocrylene, or ethylhexyl methoxinamate pollute the water and make it harder for coral to absorb sunlight, allowing it to bleach more easily. The first legislation of its type just passed in Hawaii banning the sale of products containing oxybenzone and octinoxate, but doesn't go into effect until 2021. So, you might be thinking, if I shouldn't use sunscreen with all of those ingredients, then what should I do? I'm not telling you not to wear sunscreen. Sunscreen is very important as it helps to prevent things like skin cancer. It is best to use sunscreens with non-nano zinc oxide as the active ingredient. Here are some recommendations. Companies like Avisol, Raw Elements, and Badger all sell reef-safe sunscreen. A link to a fairly comprehensive list of reef-safe sunscreens will be in the description below. Check your sunscreen. If the active ingredient is not non-nano zinc oxide, then you should look into buying new sunscreen. And it's not hard. Most hotels and resorts near coral reefs have made a conscious effort to sell reef-safe sunscreens, so you should be able to find some. Tell your friends. It's summer, so if we can spread the word, we can make a real difference and protect the world's coral reefs right now. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe, and remember, if we all do our part, we can save the environment together. <laughs>